talk is, uh, uh, is named uh, FA Notify HSM API, and I will explain the name. But basically, what I want to get to is something else. I want to get to discuss uh, a problem and a solution that John and I have been uh, working on. And I just want, want to give you some backgrounds on how we got to the problem or, or what it is. So um, uh, HSM is acronym for Hierarchic Storage Management, which is like a very, very old term for offloading uh, files from disk to tape. Uh, and F and Notify is how I want to create modern uh, HSM implementation using FA Notify. I have a wiki on that for, for the press. Uh. Yeah, and maybe uh. kindly to state a bit about the motivation, yeah, you want essentially to offload, offload the stuff like to cloud storage, for example. Yes, so my, uh, my employer, uh, Sipera Networks, they, they build uh, cloud gateway solutions, which are cache through cloud storage. You have local NAS. Actually, people that, uh, customers used to have local NAS, but they didn't used to have cloud backup for it. So now they replace for by the local NAS, fast NAS, many local users, and it's backed up by a much larger and much uh, cheaper cloud uh, uh, backend uh, store, slower tier, and the local cache, the local NAS doesn't have the disk space to hold all the cloud uh, namespace, just parts of it, so it needs to evict like page in and page out files from the cloud. That's the general use case. Um, uh, Windows is an example of uh, the operating system has an API for this. If you know Windows a bit, if you've seen like a Google Drive or OneDrive, uh, they have an API with like these icons of file in the cloud that the file is not available locally. If you access the file, it will be downloaded from the cloud. <laughs> and the operating system provides some uh, uh, infrastructure for that, like a file that's a uh, placeholder is marked with something called a parse point, which is a persistent marker on the file. And then when the file is accessed, uh, a driver gets called. That's the projection, projected file system. And that, get, uh, that specific driver uh, has an up call to a cloud sync engine, which could be Google Drive, one, Microsoft OneDrive, or whatever. So they have the infrastructure for that. Uh, Linux doesn't have anything inherent uh, for that. So products that do this sort of thing, like Sipera products and other products, may, I mean, we use Fuse. That's a common implementation for gating access to files and getting them from uh, the cloud or the local. We use Fuse. Uh, that comes with all the problems that we've heard about in the uh, two sessions before me. And I hope those problems will be uh, solved. BPF for faster read beer and uh, uh, IOU rings, they can only help because uh, honestly, I don't think we are going to be able to get rid of Fuse for all of our use cases, but what I'm going to talk about here is how we can get, uh, not rid of Fuse, but <laughs> use a different uh, alternative for the same uh, uh, use case using FA Notify. Uh, DMAPI is an API the Unix systems used to have. Linux only had it in XFS for a while. And it's an old API from the tape ages. Like it's not enough for modern day use. What I for cloud uh, offloading to cloud, but it exists. Remnants of this exist, and you know about it. Like punch hole is a remnant of DMAPI. And, and in 2010, the the DMAPI hooks, the callback to user space, were removed from XFS. Uh, with this comment, if we'd ever get HSM support in mainline, at least the namespace events can be done much easier, saner in the VFS instead of individual file systems. So this is what I'm trying to do now.
you know, this was like a deja vu for me, even the DMAPI stuff, but what I was trying to remember is, if I remember correctly, there were basically three states you could have. The file is present locally. Yeah. The file is not present locally, but you know its name. Yeah. And the, or maybe you know it's a name and it's a file. And then in between you had like, you had enough to satisfy a stat request. You know it's creation time and you know it's uh, file size and you know it's okay, timestamps. I'm not, I'm not going to, I, I don't, didn't learn the DMAPI uh, <laughs> standards. Um, I think that's what Windows, but, like uh, that Windows API you refer Yeah, but for our solution, yeah, we use placeholder files that are just sparse files. Yeah. So first, uh, when you access a directory that wasn't available locally, the directory is filled with sparse files that have all the metadata but don't have the data. And when you access the data, the data is being downloaded. That's so, basic. so basically, you have two. I think Windows had three. It um, doesn't matter. Still. But I Not guess what I'm getting is, I do, so you have two states. You know the name of the file and yeah. it's sparse, or you know its data and everything. Yeah. So there's two states total. That's okay. right. There are different implementation with different states, but that, yeah, that's the basic thing. So here is an implementation of um, HSM engine using FA Notif upstream FA Notify. It can be done because FA Notify uh, was uh, introduced for the antivirus case. So it, it knows to intercept access to files in order to scan for viruses. So you can intercept a file on an open event, open permission event. And if this file is a sparse placeholder, uh, you can use that open to fill the content from the cloud. And when you want to evict the content of the file, I have a POC for that, it's pretty simple. You can use a exclusive write list, you take exclusive write list on the file, punch hole, everything works uh, great. I mean, it's very naive, HSM, uh, but it works. It has many limitations, like uh, you'd have to fill the entire uh, movie <laughs> that you want to watch on, at open time. So it's not really practical for modern day use, but but it works. Uh, the other part of the DMAPI or HSM API is monitoring which files will modify, which files are dirty, that need to be uh, uploaded uh, to the cloud. Um, I guess Windows has that internally with NTFS anyway, but uh, um, for with FA Notify, at least since uh, 4.20 or 5.1, you can at least uh, watch over the entire file system for notification events. And this is important for our use case because we typically deal with like many millions of files, even only in the cache, in the front, uh, fast tier, there could be billions of files. And of course, the, the slower tier may have mo a larger namespace. So it's important to have some sort of a large scale uh, way uh, to monitor for changes. And so, I don't have it backwards. Uh, so what I've done uh, in order to facilitate uh, HSM, a more modern HSM, what's in this slide is POC patches. This is not upstream yet, although the last one is. It's POC patches. I've posted them or maybe just posted the link, but they're simple. That not, they are not very controversial, they are small patches, there are small changes that can be done to FA Notify uh, to make it uh, available for um, good HSM implementation. The first one is a lookup permission command. The lookup permission just allows you to uh, populate a directory on demand when it's not uh, available locally. Uh, Report access range is just uh, to facilitate the access permission event with access range information. So when you access a mo when you're watching a movie file from the cloud, you get a notification for ra access to a specific range, and you can fill this range. Pretty simple. Um, uh, the last one, evictable marks. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but it's already upstream. It has to do with scaling. Scaling FA Notify to be able to deal uh, with a lot of files. And the, the one before last, uh, cra crash safe uh, change tracking. That's something that I've, I've been working on for, for a long time now. I've had several solutions. I've talked about them in the conference here. I had overlay snapshots, and then I had a different version of overlay snapshots using FS Notify 
uh, as, as uh, um, the hoops, uh, but essentially it boils down to, in addition to open permission event and access permission event, you need pre-create, pre-name change, pre-namespace changes event. You need pre-create, pre-delete, these sorts of event blocking in order to be able to say, to track the changes in a crash, crash consistent way, whether it's in a database or uh, whatever. What I do internally in our codec is I store the markers for this directory has been changed inside the same file system. So I get a crash consistent state between the file system and the markers for changes. I just use directories. I do make dir of some the ID, the, FS, the ID of the directory as an indication that something has changed in the directory. So I get crash consistent safety, at least an XFS for that part for free. Um, this is a demo that I don't have time to show uh, of how utilizing the, the extensions that I've uh, shown before. I just want to have this slide uh, just to so show an example of what I did. I took, I just looked for an, um, a simple upstream SKUs implementation which fall under the uh, category of HSM. So I just pick one HTTP DRFS. It's a read-only HSM. It, it takes a URL to an HTTP uh, website and as you access it, it lazily downloads the index listing and lazily fills the files, even ranges of files. So if you do the command that's listed on the second line, like uh, you go, you mount the fuse file system to uh, kernel.org, a repository, and then you want to do, uh, to extract the head of the tarball of this uh, firmware and list the beginning of the listing of the tarball, then it lazily uh, populates the directories on the path from the website into the local cache directory, and then it just downloads the first megabyte of this tarball and uses the local cache to uh, open it. Uh, so I took this as is, and it works. I mean, if you do this example with the upstream HTTP FS, it works, and it, it does everything lazily. I just added the dash dash FA notify and I replaced the uh, fuse implementation drop-in replacement with FA notify hook. So when you do dash dash FA notify, slash www is no longer a fuse mount, it's a bind mount. It's a bind mount to the slash cache directory, but the bind mount of slash www has an FA notify uh, mark on it. So if you access through www, your ls, www, it intercepts the access uh, permission event or lookup permission event and fills the directory. So you get the same, but without fuse for this use case. Um, anything to say here? No. No, no, no. Slash www is just a bind mount to slash cache. Slash cache is benign. If you do ls, you see nothing. You do ls on www, suddenly you see something and you go sl ls on slash cache and you see the same thing. Yeah. If we have time, I can show the demo. But I wanted to get not to this slide, which is complex, but to the next one, which is more complex. I'm going to try to get you to understand in order to try to get you to understand the problem, in order to try to be able to sell the solution. Uh, so this is uh, not so complicated, maybe I made it complicated, but this, this is FN Notify today. So FN Notify today, um, this is, uh, the events uh, happen in this order by time, like this happens, and then this, and then that. This is one uh, process that's trying to access a file right? Uh, no, it's clone file or empty. Never mind. It does some access to a file. And this is another process that's doing uh, freeze so thaw for some reason. Maybe it's an LVM snapshot. I don't know. And uh, 
this process generates an access permission uh, event, a blocking access permission event, because the file was accessed. And then the antivirus agent or my HSM implementation intercept the uh, access permission event because the source of the copy file range file is a placeholder. It doesn't have data, for example. So it intercepts the call, and then it needs to fill the file. It needs to fill the source of the clone file range, so it needs to write into the file. So then it goes into write system call, and here we seem to be, we seem to have a loop, right? Because this process in writing is going to generate another permission event for the write. So inherently, it looks like we have a loop, but that was already dealt with when SNR to file was first uh, merged, because it's the same loop. An antivirus uh, engine wants to scan the file, it needs to read the content of the file in order to scan it. So this is solved by that FNR to file providing a special file descriptor, which has the F mode no notify uh, flag set. So the listener uh, gets special uh, privileges to access the file without generating this event. So that's the basic loop that is implemented. But I'm showing a another deadlock here, another protection deadlock that I think is currently possible uh, in upstream. What happens is, this is why I use copy file range and not just freeze. Copy file range takes uh, freeze protection before copy file range starts. And then the process that handling the maybe antivirus scanner or if my HSM, uh, maybe antivirus scanner wants to move the file um, uh, to quarantine. It wants to make a change. So it goes to the file system and wants to make a change or write to a log file or whatever. And that change is going to also want to take freeze protection. And if it's on the same file system, like you're moving a file to a quarantine, you want to take freeze protection from this thread. But if this guy comes in between and starts to freeze, then this one is blocked by the freezer. It cannot start the write. And this guy is blocking the freezer from continuing, so you have a deadlock. Sorry if that wasn't clear. <laughs> uh, but it's, um, it's a deadlock that I think is currently possible. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare maybe, but not too rare. So I don't know why nobody noticed it, but Maybe, I don't know, uh, not exactly. So uh, this is a deadlock that, so, so I wanted to solve this deadlock because it's probably more common in my HSM example than with antivirus uh, scanners. Uh, so the way that I uh, approached it is, uh, currently the access events are hooked from within the LSM security hook. So the LSM security hook has a hook security file permission or something like that, and FS notify uh, hooks into that LSM uh, hook. Uh, so first of all, I added an explicit FS notify hook before taking freeze protection. Okay, I'm, I'm not inside the LSF, I added another one. And I annotated all the um, FS notify hooks, uh, also the ones within the I annotated them whether or not they are called with uh, freeze protection taken or without. And the one that are taken without freeze protection are reported as uh, with the flag fan uh, pre VFS. And then the implementation, the engine, uh, knows if it's safe to do a write or not. And then it has the option, for example, to just block the access instead of filling the file. Uh, but in our case, because there is a hook before copy file range starts, the implementation get, gets an opportunity to fill the file, and then the second uh, hook will most likely uh, be okay. That's, that's the solution that I gave to this problem. Um, uh, maybe there are other solutions, I don't know, but uh, this wasn't hard to do. That wasn't so hard to do. Um, Maybe questions about, <laughs> before I go to this <laughs> slide. Okay. Um, so, 
I guess what I'm, what bothers me is that I, the example I was thinking of was Apple, I think, and Windows, their explorer, their GUI, had to be aware of these kinds of things. So the app really needed to know whether the file was offline and all that stuff. It needed to know that. So they exposed this because otherwise you have stupid things that read icons and the first 50 bytes get read, which causes you to, you know, but it, like you don't, you don't know that they're trying to read the first 50 bytes for every single file in the directory to populate some pretty little. Okay, you're, you're talking about the, uh, the offline well, bit I'm that gives a hint to the yeah, it gives a hint so you, to so the you applications. Don't like don't don't poke into this file unless you really want to read the content of this yeah. file because it has consequences. Well, I mean, with that the HSM solution is is independent of that. I mean, applications can. I mean, we, we can, for example, talk about uh, exporting the offline yeah. bit with StatX again, but it's independent of. Well, the reason I was asking would it would it reduce the chance that this would be an issue? Because no. literally in a Mac, every single file is going to be read. No, it doesn't. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, okay, assuming that you got uh, the last slide, so I need to. What does the center box represent? Okay, so I didn't say what it is, but okay. at the previous slide, I just said, well, somebody's doing a LVM snapshot, somebody's okay. doing freeze thaw. And if you cannot complete the freeze, you will not get to thaw, then you're in deadlock. That's what it stands for. But actually, it's not, it's not arbitrary, uh, because in my HSM, uh, HSM does do uh, freeze thaw. At least my implementation does freeze thaw, because the way it works for uh, collecting changes, it collects them in a, ba in a batch, it, in, in periods. What, what changed between... Uh, today and tomorrow, uh, yesterday and today. And to be able to be crash safe and, s and not uh, say I've recorded everything, everything that's on this is my in my database, then I do a freeze, f a freeze thaw uh, between the periods. So it's actually part of the HSM that's creating this uh, deadlock. Uh, okay, so the use case here is, um, has to do with change tracking. So it's similar to before, but instead of looking at the access permission event, I'm looking at a pre-create event. So pre-create doesn't exist yet. It's just part of the patches that I posted. But if I, if we merge a pre-create event, we would end up with uh, a problem like this. So um, the process on the right is just doing make beer. But it's doing make beer. It just pick a make beer. It doesn't matter what. Uh, and the HSM, the change tracker of the HSM, uh, gets uh, an event, a pre-create event, and needs to record the fact that something has changed. Now, my first, first initial and naive implementation used the LSM hook. There are LSM hooks for uh, security I not make beer, and just as uh, as I note, if I used to hook to access and open, I hooked into make beer generated uh, uh, create permission event, even no, I didn't call it pre-create, I called it create permission. But then the HSM does something uh, when it gets, in my example, it creates um, a directory, but it can do something else. And besides the loop that we talked about before, it's creating a directory, it will create uh, an event. This is solved very similarly by using a an OPath file descriptor that has the no notify flag. So this loop, this simple loop is solved. But the other problem is uh, the freeze uh, deadlock again. Um, so, okay, in order to solve the freeze deadlock, it's the same deadlock as before. Uh, I did the same thing. Uh, I didn't need the pre-VFS flags. I just moved the hook, which is a new hook, before uh, taking freeze protection. So uh, I assume that SD write barrier is doing its thinking on us. Yeah, let's get to that. Let's <laughs> get to that. <laughs> uh, first of all, I was avoiding uh, the, dead, the obvious deadlock uh, that the red arrows have. 
And I did not introduce the hook, the red hook there. I just introduced an earlier hook before taking field protection. So HSM is always free to write to the file system. Events happen, I am going to change the file system. Please record the change before I make the change. That works to prevent the deadlock. But then I get to the races part of the problem. The race part of the problem is I get an event before making the modification. I record the event, say the engine looks at the file, it is changed, it backs the file up to the cloud, but the modification didn't happen yet. So now the modification happens and it's not being recorded because I've already did a freeze thaw, close everything and say everything is in sync and now the rest of the change happens invisibly. And you have a change in the file system that's not recorded. So that's, uh, that's a trade-off between two problems, the deadlock and the race problem. And the way that uh, John proposed to solve this is to wrap the um, file system modification operations in a sleeping RCU read context. So actually, uh, the way it's implemented is inside MNT won't write, uh, I, I created uh, like variants of it, MNT won't write and file start write. We embed also a start of an SS, SRCU, sleeping RCU uh, read size section, which covers the entire uh, modification uh, period, from before you start to after you, you did it. And, and then, for example, in my HSM, either I don't do freeze store at all, because I don't really have to, or I do freeze store, but before that, uh, yeah, SB write barrier is a synchronized SRCU. And then I'm able to maintain a view of a change tracking period. There are overlapping periods, right? You have all the changes from this time to that time, and you have all the changes from this time to that time, where the overlapping period where you started to do SB write barrier means that all the changes that are being done right from here to here are recorded in both previous period and current period. So you never get to a state where you're always in a state that where if you're looking, if anything is dirty, you, will may, you may get a false positive of things that are dirty, but there is no, nothing dirty, but you cannot miss changes. Looking at your diagram, you still actually have the deadlock, don't you? Because uh, in the third, the, the right-hand box, you've got the SB start right SRCU before that, but it looks like if, if, the, if that happens after the SB write barrier, you've still got your deadlock. So SB write barrier doesn't stop this one from proceeding. It does not. It just waits for all the, the ones that started to complete. That's the difference between the freeze protection and uh, Why the because sleeping uh, SRCU doesn't stop from new uh, read uh, sections to begin. It just waits for when it started to yeah, complete. So, so SB, like the start right SRCU is not a working operation, right? It's like <coughs> basically how our RCU works and MSRCU as well is that it just basically increments some counter and that's all. Uh, and the barrier just knows that to wait for everything that has started before it was called, but the new like new regions can be still started. So the red arrows do not exist. The red arrows are the, uh, the prototype. They do not exist because this is not, not upstream, right? This is a, a plan. The red arrows are the first bad plan. The blue arrows are the plan that's uh, uh, deadlock free. But, uh, and the yellow ones are the attempt to solve the race. I told you ahead that uh, it's 
going to be challenging. Um, yeah, we're a bit of out of time. Um, well, I guess I've shown what I wanted to show, and uh, we're out of time. Uh, we can also move the the FS note FS info talk to the VFS session tomorrow, or start to talk about mount uh, name mount namespace changes notifications now since we're on the subject of notifications. Uh, what do you say? FS info at, at the empty slopet of VFS uh, mini conference tomorrow. And we start, yeah, 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 Christian, that would be it. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I, I was proposing since uh, we now need to have a slot about FS info slash mount changes notifications, which is a bit much for a single session even. Maybe we uh, improvise and do uh, just Try to do mount notifications now and FS info tomorrow. Um, uh, Nicholas, do you want to lead this? Or maybe I, I can start with uh, the FN notify uh, uh, mount event. Maybe it's related. Uh, OK. Um, uh, anyway, I, I didn't get, uh, were there any more questions? Uh, no, OK. Uh, I didn't get to one part, though. Uh, First of all, any anyone wants to uh, shoot down uh, the SP uh, right barrier before we, uh, we continue? No? Okay. Joseph, yes? So I don't love it, but I, don't, I like I don't hate it enough to like block you. I assume you've already looked at how we could probably do this with the existing freeze thaw thing, like at another level, perhaps. Yeah, so we were looking into how, how to do this, but uh, like current freeze thaw has has the problem exactly that it's relatively expensive operation because basically before you can tell that the parking is frozen, you have to finish all the writes, flush all the URC data and stuff like this. This is much cheaper operation because essentially it, it doesn't have to flush any URC data because this really asks only about have all the writes, like wait for all the writes to finish from the moment I ask to. So, so it, it is much less disruptive to the rest of the system. While freeze is very disruptive to everything that's running on the system, this is disruptive essentially only for the one who is calling the breed. Yes, so so like really this, like because this, if we are not speaking about HSM, which is disruptive anyway, but if we are speaking about other use cases of like persistent file modification tracking, you, ultimately want also unprivileged applications to be able to track changes, possibly not on the whole file system, but on some sub hierarchy of the file system or sub directory. And then you don't want these applications to be able to hog your file systems with essentially sinks and stuff like this. So we want we wanted some lightweight way for these applications to be able that, you know, all the writes to the part of the file system they are interested in are finished without imposing the performance penalty on everybody else. I, I forgot to say also, I, when I we, if I have SB write barrier, I don't need to do freeze thaw. It's enough to do SB write barrier and syncfs. So syncfs is sort of like this because it starts something and flushes all the dirty inodes that have been dirty in the, up to this point. So it's similar, it's a complementary API. And I was hoping that Jeff would say, yeah, that sounds interesting. I could use that for uh, uh, per <laughs> You forgot, huh? <laughs> uh, I can use that uh, because there was a problem discussed on the I version um, discussion. Uh, when does I version uh, need to be bumped? Before the operation, after the operation? The, it's not clear. There are it's, but it's the same, conceptually, it's the same problem. If you do introduce this concept, maybe it can solve other problems. 
And in this respect, John was hoping that we can introduce this to ZFS and you can have SB right barrier and just use it. Uh, one problem is that the test bots found the regression for like small writes. Uh, yeah, because small writes do not take uh, locks and there's a memory like barrier TMPFS. There. It was like visible on TMPFS write because the additional cost of uh, taking the extra cache line for SRCU were actually visible on TMPFS write. <laughs> it, it was not terrible, but it was like yeah, 20 it was observable. It was observable. And yeah, I solved this. I mean, I fixed the regression for my use case because what I did is uh, I, for writes, I took the SRCU, there's a S uh, SRCU context uh, which gets up to the FS uh, notify hook and you just take it conditionally whether you're handling the event or not. But it's not a generic solution. Then we thought maybe, maybe we can use the I version observed uh, bit to decide whether or not to take SLCU. So yeah, so the question is whether you want, like similar to priest protection, whether you want to uh, grab the SRCU unconditionally uh, or whether you want to somehow hide it and grab it only when someone is actually interested in this to kind of reduce the overhead for as far as things like TMPFS, <laughs> which don't really care, actually. How do you know which one is going to be interested in it, though, without taking the lock? I mean, in terms of when you have to actually test that thing and you have to be interested in it, do you know that it's going to be So I don't yeah. know how to generalize it. So let's let's so move so on to the next. So for NFS, it might be like harder. Eh? If you want to use it on NFS, basically when exporting, you have to enable like I now need the SRCU grab for for the I'm file system I'm exporting. Yeah. So 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 there it would have to happen like at this moment. Um, 